Okay. So let us consider another example with the same first come first serve. See, same number of process I have used P1, P2, P3. Same CPU burst also I have used 3, 3, 24, but in reverse order. Okay. First P1, 3 seconds. P2, 3 seconds. P3, 24 seconds. Or for your easy understanding, we can take like this also. Same process coming in different order. Okay. P3, P2, P3. Okay, same process. Consider same process as per our previous example. P1, CPU burst time is 24 seconds. P2, 3 seconds. P3, 3 seconds. But arrives in different order. Okay, arrive in the CPU, sorry, arrive in the ready queue in different order. So this also will be changing. Okay. P3, P2, P3. <coughs> okay, now processors are available in the ready queue in this order. P3 first, P2 first and P1 third. Same CPU burst time, same number of process, arrival time also equal to zero. Now we have to draw the Gantt chart for this CPU scheduling algorithm. So first which process will enter into the CPU? P3 will enter into the CPU, start set time 0 and P3 CPU burst time is 3 seconds. So it will complete its job at 3 seconds. Okay, next P2 will enter, so P3 is completed. P2 is entering the CPU. P2 will execute for 3 seconds, so 3 plus 3 is 6 seconds. Okay, then obviously P1 will enter into the CPU. P1 will execute for 24 seconds, so it will complete at 30 seconds. Okay, this is gun chart for process P3, P2 and P1. Now, let us see the waiting time for each process. Okay, waiting time for each process. Already we know the formula. Waiting time equal to completion time minus arrival time plus CPU burst time. Let us see for each process. Process P1. Completion time for process P1 is 30 minus arrival time is 0 for all process 0 plus CPU burst time for process P1 is 24 seconds. So 30 minus 24 is 6. Process P2. Completion time for process P2 is 6 minus arrival time is 0 plus CPU burst time is 3. So 6 minus 3 equal to 3. Process P3, completion time is 3 minus 0, arrival time is 0 plus CPU burst time is 3. So 3 minus 3 equal to 0. Previous example, P1 of 24 seconds available in the ready queue as a first process. So P1 enters into the CPU, process P1 waiting time is 0. But in this example, process P3 arrives first. And CPU burst time for process P3 is 0, even though it first enters into the CPU, so its waiting time is 0. So which process comes first, that process uh, waiting time will be always 0. So according to this example, P1 waiting time is 3 seconds, P2 waiting time is, sorry, P1 waiting time is 6 seconds, P2 waiting time is 3 seconds, P3 waiting time is 0 seconds. So what is average waiting time? 6 plus 3 plus 0, 9 divided by 3. So 9 divided by 3 is 3. Comparatively, what is the average waiting time for our first example? First example is 17. So compare 17 and 3. It is almost reduced by 1 6. Okay, reduced by 1 6. What is the reason? Okay, that we will discuss. Now what is the formula for turnaround time? Turnaround time equal to completion time minus arrival time. Okay. Now let us consider turnaround time for each process. Process P1. What is completion time for process P1? 30 minus arrival time is 0 equal to 30. Process P2 turnaround time. Completion time is 6 minus 0 equal to 6. Completion time for process P3. 3 minus 0 equal to 3. So what is average turnaround time? 
30 plus 6 plus 3 divided by 3. Okay, that is 39 divided by 3 equal to 13. But comparatively, what is average turnaround time for previous example? Previous example is 27. Now for this example is 13, almost half. Okay, this is almost 1 by 6 that is in See, same example, but the arrival of process in the ready queue is different. First example, P1, CPU bus time is 24, then P23 and then P3. Now same process arrives in different order. Okay, first P3 is coming, then P2 is coming, then P1 is coming. 